On June 27, 2019, Jacob Tyler Thurston, better known as Hella Sketchy, was pronounced dead after failing to survive an overdose. It was a tough loss for his family and fans. I still remember the feeling I got when I found out he died. I felt awful, not only because another one of my favorite rappers had died, but also because of how young he was, just 18 years old, which even for a SoundCloud rapper's untimely death is overwhelmingly young. Sketchy was hardly able to scratch the surface of what he was capable of, leaving fans to wonder what could have been. In the short time he was alive, he created his own sound. His music was a manifestation of his own personality, happy, upbeat, and positive, regardless of what he was rapping about. But what made him this way, and how did he become such a popular rapper on the internet at such a young age. To answer those questions, we have to go back to where it all started. Hello Sketchy, whose real name is Jacob Tyler Thurston, was born on January 11, 2001 in Thousand Oaks, California. His ethnicity was half Scandinavian and half Filipino, and he had two younger sisters. In school, Sketchy was a smart kid. In first grade, he tested extremely gifted, and in second grade, he was reading at an 8th grade level, with comprehension at a 6th grade level. He was homeschooled from 3rd to 8th grade, learning how to program in Java at the age of 10 to customize his Minecraft server. His father Eric said, I'll never forget coming home one afternoon and finding him at the computer coding in Java to adjust the settings of Minecraft. I sat there in awe, thinking, how does this 10 year old kid know how to do this? Sketchy showed musical interest at a young age. He began playing guitar at 6 years old, and when he was 9, he took lessons at a musical school with other children. Him and his father bonded over music, jamming Green Day songs together in the garage. There's even a video of Sketchy stage diving at a Green Day concert in front of 20,000 people when he was just a kid. When Sketchy was 12, his family moved to Austin, Texas, and it stunned him. He was already an introvert, but that was the nail in the coffin, and he began to spend tons of time in his room. His guitar started to collect dust, but he discovered SoundCloud, which he didn't know at the time would change his life. Pretty soon, Sketchy became engrossed into making beats. He would go days with headphones glued to his ears, making beats on his computer. He started producing at 13, and by the time he was 14, he had already sold his first beat. There was actually a post he made on Reddit from 2016 where he shared his first beat tape. The comments were surprised at how good he was for someone who had only been producing for one month. One user asked how he managed to learn so fast. He shared in a reply, I honestly have no idea. I just dedicate a lot of my time towards producing and watching videos I'm producing. Whenever I get spare time, I put it into producing. And being a freshman in high school, you got a lot of spare time. In his earliest stages as a producer, he would make lo-fi. And the way he described his beats on Bandcamp were, airy, chill, spaced out, atmospheric, wavy vibes, and wavy, elegant trap. He wouldn't stop experimenting though, and his beats just got better and better. He started racking up impressive accolades early into his producing career. Just six months into being a producer, and he had already produced for Juice World, the 5am outro on Juice's EP Twilight Zone, and a song called Work, which would leak after Sketchy passed. Juice World wasn't famous yet when he first used one of Sketchy's beats, but it still was a pretty big deal even then. Slowly, he became a prominent producer in the underground, producing for Big Baby Gucci, Warhol SS, Kevin Kazi, David Shoddy, Coldheart, Lil Tracy, and Take A, whose song Saran Pack is the biggest song Sketchy would ever produce. His beats were everywhere. He even has a song with Destroy Lonely, who wasn't even popular at the time, and many more artists just like that. Sketchy's beats had a happy cartoonish sound. You could even say he helped pioneer the hyper pop beats that started growing in popularity with rappers in 2020. Before long, he had made over $40,000 from selling beats on the internet, and at the end of 2018, Sketchy moved to LA after signing a deal with Atlantic Records. Once Sketchy moved to LA, he began taking his career as a solo artist more seriously. He had been rapping since he was 15 and already had quite a few songs with a lot of streams like Flip Phone Shorty, Spend a Check, X is Mad, Stupid, Rack on Me, and a Heart Emoji to name a few. Flip Phone Shorty was Sketchy's first hot song. He produced the song himself so it had the typical bubbly, upbeat, happy-go-lucky piano sound. He raps about a girl and brags about his money. She has money too though and he tells her he'll comfort her if she's ever lonely. Keep in mind, Sketchy was only 15 at the time and the lyrics about his flip phone and the Motorola Samsung were likely influenced by Young Bro, the name Lil Tracy used to go by. Meta Check was Sketchy's biggest song. It's so simple but catchy and he raps about all the money he's making on the internet. Exes keep hitting his phone but he won't let that get in between him and the money. The music video on a starry is him on a tennis court and at a kids playground with his friends. And he's even a bit awkward in the video. People in the comments loved it and it was a strong indication of his potential as a rapper. X is mad is all about girls he used to be with, talking shit about him behind his back. He doesn't care though because he has a new girl and he's still making money. The cover art is pretty funny. It's a girl, presumably his ex, asking Sketchy to come over but he says he's playing Fortnite and she gets mad. Stupid was the second biggest song while he was alive. He raps about the cars he's in, drugs 
drugs like lean and pills, and is almost sudden rise to fame. On Rack on Me featuring Wallen, he raps about taking another guy's girlfriend and people trying to use him for fame. Heart Emojis is about Sketchy's lifestyle. Girls are worried he's gonna overdose, but he doesn't care because he's balling out. Through these songs, Sketchy had created his own aesthetic. He would rock Sketchers, his fans were called Cupid Soldiers, and he had a face tat with a symbol from the anime Angel Beats. One of the reasons Sketchy was able to drop so many hits was because of his work ethic. Once he got to LA, he started recording in the studio 24-7. Eli Picaretta and Atlantic Records A&R, who worked closely with Sketchy, said, When it comes to making music, it's a lot like sports. The more you're in the studio, the more you're gonna grow and evolve as an artist. He understood that and embraced that mentality wholeheartedly. Those long nights turned into an album, and on March 22nd, Sketchy dropped his debut album, self-titled Hella Sketchy, with 12 tracks featuring Rico Nasty, Diablo, Warhol SS, and Money Mar. Some of the songs were older, but the project showed a lot of growth. He wasn't just talking about money and clothes like he was when he was 15. He began sharing struggles with drugs, anxiety, and depression on songs like Kick the Cup, Misunderstood, and What Happened. In Kick the Cup, a girl is trying to get Sketchy to quit lean, but he can't. He apologizes to his mom and compares his drug use to Blackjack, saying he's playing with his life. In What Happened, Sketchy raps about someone who used to be one of his close friends, but switched up. They made fun of his drug use, and he isn't having it anymore lashing out on the song. Misunderstood is an alternative song and Sketchy is even wearing a Lil Peep come over when you're sober shirt in the music video. He's popping pills like they're nothing to deal with the pain he's feeling, but it's not working. There's a chilling line where he says these drugs might be the death of me. Sketchy also released an EP with Coldheart called Stargazers, which were two love songs and was part of a group, D1, consisting of Justin Shiroi, Marcelo, Keegan Hoffman, Lil Winter slash Ginseng, and Despair, who are some of his closest collaborators and friends, who he also has an album with. Sketchy's final EP was called Fading Away, which was really eerie considering he would pass away soon after. And I'm not sure Sketchy raps about friends being worried about him. He feels like they don't understand and he's sorry for letting them down. And too much, he talks about the extent his drug abuse had gone to and wondering where it all went wrong. He doesn't want to feel this way anymore. And afraid, he's literally afraid of what his life has come to and losing his girlfriend. He feels inadequate and cursed. The EP was entirely different from what his music sounded like. He no longer was just flexing on happy piano beats. He was singing his heart out about topics like his depression and his addiction. In retrospect, the EP was a call for help. He even said in the song, I'm not sure, rapping. I need help, I don't wanna call for help. On June 13th, two days after his final song, Afraid, was released, Sketchy was found unresponsive in his room from a drug overdose. This wasn't the first time something like this occurred. He had been struggling with addiction for a while. When he was 16, Sketchy overdosed and had to go to the ER while he was in his parents' car. To their horror, they discovered his backpack was filled with Molly and Xanax. He had bought it off the dark web with money from his beats. After Sketchy was found unresponsive, he was revived and transported to an emergency room where he remained in a coma for two weeks. He didn't make it, and at 5.11am on June 27, 2019, he passed away. His music inspired many rappers and producers in today's scene, and his estate has released a couple of music videos and projects posthumously since his passing. So that's it for this video. I put his GoFundMe in the description below if you want to help his family out. I go by Rashad Fashir. Feel free to comment and give me any feedback or thoughts you had on this video. See you next time.